It's called a bear raid. Those who are active in the markets probably recognize this term. For the rest of us, we've probably never heard it before. Robinhood may have been protecting a bear raid by major hedge funds, and we need to talk about this. The investment markets are a cutthroat venue, so much so that the Romans at the Colosseum 2,000 years ago might just have lost their appetite for free bread and gone home. Every day, trading goes on at levels which beggar description. Stocks rise and fall. Bond yield rates fluctuate as well. Contracts in the heavily leveraged commodities markets are bought and sold, allowing some investors to cash in big and forcing others into bankruptcy. Futures, derivatives, exotics... All are traded at lightning speed, and all securities represent bets in the most bloodthirsty casinos in the world, the ones on Wall Street. Watching over all this action is the Securities and Exchange Commission, a few thousand experts whose job it is to identify illegal trading. They were formed in the wake of the market collapse, which led to the Great Depression, when overleveraged and potentially fraudulent stock purchases created an economic bubble which burst wiping out significant amounts of invested wealth and tipping a series of financial dominoes which kept going until the entire economy collapsed. Laws were passed to ensure that fraudulent trading practices could no longer create market bubbles, and the SEC was formed to enforce those laws. The SEC is just a few thousand people, though. With today's global markets and the evolution of more and more exotic trades, coupled with the influence of day trading, the SEC has its hands full. It's impossible for them to catch every instance of securities fraud, especially when there are over 150,000 people working in investment banking alone, over 6 million people in the financial industry, and roughly 6,000 publicly traded companies to choose from, most of whom issue multiple securities like stocks and bonds. That doesn't even touch the day trader ranks, where nearly 10 million people engage in trading. Now, one of the ways in which a smart investment company can make money is to create a hedge fund. Hedge funds are funds which purchase short contracts on securities expected to drop, such as the stock of a distressed company. Short contracts require the selling of securities not currently owned by the investor. They borrow these securities by contracting to buy them when the value drops to a certain level. The brokerage uses shares purchased from other clients from their own holdings or bought from other brokerages and is paid interest and dividends on the loaned shares based on the current market price. The short seller can make a significant amount of money by effectively selling something that they don't own at a high price and then buying it at a lower price which appears later in order to return those shares to the broker. The broker, meanwhile, gets cut of those profits and is able to use the margin deposits just like any bank would use deposits by investing them. Now, shorting securities isn't illegal is actually a decent way to manage risk if you have the stomach for betting that a company will keep losing money. But shorting securities is also a temptation towards conducting what's known as a bear raid. And that's the problem. A bear raid is set up when one or more short sellers create a significant number of short contracts on a distressed security, hoping to force the price of that security down and extract a significant amount of the value of that security before it drops. In a bear raid, the short sellers will then hint around that the security is distressed, so the value will drop as expected. They get in and out, walking away with a significant percentage of the value of that stock as profit. Meanwhile, the precipitous drop created by the short sale devalues the shares held by other investors and absorbs the cash reserves of that company, forcing them deeper into financial crisis and perhaps bankruptcy. It's for this reason that bear raids are targeted at the securities of distressed companies. A company already struggling to stay in business doesn't raise as many eyebrows if it suddenly collapses. Short sellers have to pay collateral for the shares they've borrowed, called a margin. If the stock goes up, the margin required for the borrowed securities also goes up. Short sellers then have to make an additional payment to cover that margin, which is called a margin call. That brings us to GameStop. This company specializes in selling video games in brick-and-mortar stores, a niche market which peaked about 10 years ago. They compete directly with gaming distribution services like Steam, and over the last few years, GameStop has been losing a lot of ground. We've seen this phenomenon before. In the 1980s, companies like Blockbuster Video made a lot of money renting videos and later DVDs to customers. 
In the late 1990s, though, streaming services like Netflix took over the home movie distribution industry, and by 2014, Blockbuster was all but wiped out. The way business works changes constantly, especially in tech, and businesses have to change with the times if they want to remain successful. GameStop is still trying to adjust its business model by catering to hardcore gamers, and it's struggling. But today, GameStop is ripe for a bear raid, and it seems that the hedge fund managers know it. GameStop stock has been heavily shorted over the last year. Because a short contract can leverage stock, it's actually possible to short more stock than a company has outstanding. This has happened with GameStop, which is shorted by 140%. And it would have worked, too, if it wasn't for those meddling Reddit users. On the Reddit forum r slash WallStreetBets, day traders discuss stocks. Day traders are small investors who use apps like Robinhood to buy and sell stocks. On the average, since day traders typically aren't experienced investors, they lose money on 80% of their trades. In January, though, the users on this subreddit figured out that GameStop was massively shorted. Uh-oh. That was a big problem for anyone trying to short GameStop because a massively shorted stock is typically undervalued, which means that when a bear raid is teed up, a short squeeze is just as ready to begin. A short squeeze is pretty simple to understand. Traders who note that a stock is undervalued and heavily shorted will start buying that stock. Fast. That drives up the price of the stock, which forces people who hold short contracts to make their margin calls, which then forces those who cannot cover the margin to close out their shorts by buying stocks, which of course results in the stock price going up even more. This squeezes out the short sellers, who can lose their shirts covering their shorts when they close them out. The rapid rise in the price of the stock in question provides a healthy profit to those buying the stocks directly instead of closing out their shorts. Well, the day traders initiated that short squeeze, and between January 12th and January 27th, GameStop stock rose from $19.95 to $345.51 per share. On the 28th, GameStop opened at $500 per share, roughly 25 times the price it had been just 16 days before. As the squeeze unfolded, r slash WallStreetBets gleefully discussed other stocks which were likewise heavily shorted. At least 16 other stocks facing heavy shorts were also squeezed. AMC Theaters, heavily distressed by COVID-related closures, shot up nearly 500% in value. Cost Corporation, a manufacturer of low-end headphones, rocketed up more than 37 times their previous value. Express Incorporated, a fashion retailer also under pressure due to COVID-related closures, bounced up over 680% in value. Even Blockbuster Video, which has been closed for business for quite some time and has exactly one location in Oregon that is still open under that brand name, had stock in their liquidation company shoot up because of a short squeeze. And then Robinhood, the app that many day traders use to squeeze those shorts, blocked these day traders from buying those stocks. The hedge fund managers, who just lost billions of dollars, were able to buy those stocks, of course. The day traders were also allowed to sell their shares, just not buy them. To me, it looked like the day traders were taking the hedge fund managers who overbought those shorts to the cleaners. Their trades weren't fraudulent, though. The thing about a short squeeze is that it's often a byproduct of a busted bear raid. Like I said... Short-selling stocks makes a bear raid very tempting, and it's quite possible that some of those hedge fund managers were doing just that. Melvin Capital lost 30% of its value in less than a month due to the squeezes. The margin call was so huge that they needed at least $2.75 billion to close out their shorts. They got at least $2 billion from Citadel LLC, another hedge fund company who owns a significant portion of Melvin Capital and also happens to own a significant stake in Robinhood. Other hedge funds were hit hard too. So far, the markets have lost at least $70 billion in value. But hey, this is how the markets work sometimes. The hedge funds didn't do anything wrong by investing in shorts. The day traders also didn't do anything wrong by investing in shorted companies, even though those investments have provoked a lot of volatility in the markets. Now, Robinhood claims that they received a call from their clearing firm to disallow buy orders from their traders in certain stocks, including GameStop. That's interesting, though, because Robinhood made a big deal in 2018 about rolling out their own in-house clearing firm, Clearing by Robinhood. 
So if their clearing firm told Robinhood that they had to stop letting clients buy GameStop, then it was Robinhood telling themselves not to allow these trades. Which makes me wonder just who told who not to allow these trades, especially when hedge funds are either closing their shorts or resetting them, both of which require them to buy stocks which first Robinhood and later other day trading brokerages were not allowing their users to buy. I'm also wondering just who authorized Robinhood to close out day trader positions without their permission, something which Robinhood claims they can do if they decide that the trader doesn't have enough collateral for their trade. I've checked that claim. It's possible that Robinhood could have made this determination on a margin account if the margin account didn't maintain the proper margin. But it's really not a good look for Robinhood to be selling people's stocks for them without orders, especially after telling them that they cannot buy those stocks. Selling drives down the price of the stock. Depending on the sale price, the day trader may be forced to take losses by that sale. A good question might be if Robinhood notified the users that they had a margin call to make before they placed those sale orders. Another good question might be if Robinhood is protecting those hedge funds, which some sources suggest may have reset their shorts just before Robinhood starts refusing some transactions and forcing others. I understand that the rapid rise in price on these stocks was spurred by a buying frenzy, and that GameStop doesn't necessarily have any more actual value as a company over last month. Buying frenzies aren't illegal, though, and they tend to clobber traders who are chasing the trend instead of leading the trend. That's part of trading on the stock markets, too. Sometimes people lose their shirts on bad investments that looked fine when they put their money down. Bear raids are fraudulent, though. It's actually against the law to manipulate the market by heavily shorting a stock and then circulating information that drives down the stock price. It's something into which the SEC needs to look carefully, especially given the ties between a self-clearing day trading firm like Robinhood and major hedge fund managers. AOC seems to think so. So does Ted Cruz. So do a lot of day traders who were suddenly stuck, unable to buy stocks, and forced to sell their positions without being consulted first. So much so that at least two class action lawsuits have been filed. Are you mad, Roast? Did you get caught out on your day trading? Um, no. Just, no. I don't engage in day trading. It's a really volatile form of trading, and I'm not keen on taking such risks with my money. Then why do you care, Roast? It's not your problem, is it? Think about it for a minute. Hedge funds, just like any other funds, have to list all of their investments publicly. That information is part of a public filing which they have to make quarterly. You can look up their positions with a little internet searching, a fact which might explain just how some day traders could figure out that GameStop had more money bet on shorts than the total value of their stocks. But if a hedge fund is taking a bath on a short squeeze, they might have to dump other securities they hold in order to make their margin calls, or even possibly to stay solvent. When they dump those securities, those stocks also take a dip. If there's a big enough drop in prices, then it could trigger automatic trades at other companies, which would further depress these stocks. It doesn't always take a boulder to start an avalanche, folks. If the market is unsteady, such as when stocks are rising despite massive increases in unemployment claims, a single pebble could start a landslide. That public information on investments could help investors to predict which positions that hedge fund managers would dump, allowing them to sell their own positions in those stocks before the hedge fund does. And we can see this happening this last week as the Dow dropped a thousand points. Again, what matters is volatility, and a short squeeze is fueled by it. The overvalued stocks will eventually drop as fast as they rose, further depressing the market and increasing the risk of a panic. That's why the SEC needs to be scrutinizing this situation very carefully, especially with financial reporters blaming the whole mess not on the hedge funds who heavily shorted those stocks, but rather on the day traders who shared publicly available information on social media. Some people are even calling for forums on social media to be closed to discussing trader information. If there was no bear raid in the making, then fine. If there was no insider trading from the day traders, then fine. But I believe that the SEC might have some serious questions about day trading companies taking control of day traders' accounts, especially when some of them have such close ties to hedge funds.